He was a typical Montanan, proud, um, ex-Marine, very patriotic, liked to hunt, liked to fish. I think he was the person who wanted to be in control, and the thought of losing control scared him to death. He didn't want, he didn't want to, he didn't want to lay in waste, and he didn't want to have people have to take care of him. He didn't want to suffer. He didn't want to, he didn't want all of the things that ended up happening. He, he wanted to be a little bit more in control of all that. And after watching him, I, I realized that he should have been able to. I, I wished he had. Rather than it being cloak and dagger, in asking your son to help you and have your wife not real comfortable with it, and so you're, you're doing things, you're hiding things, you're, you're doing it the wrong way. Why not be upfront about it where you can converse with your doctor and get the information that you need to make the choices that you want to make? And I wasn't the greatest consultant. I think that the oncologist would have been a lot better consultant. And this business, you could follow it up. I mean, back out by the woodshed, lots of stuff can go wrong out there. And a botched deal would be worse than, than anything that would be horrible for the people that are left. I think so humane. I think it's so compassionate. Who wants to live an ugly death? You know, you just don't know. Um, it's like rolling the dice. If you don't do something, it could be a very nice death, like you see on movies and things. But it could be ugly, too. Sure, I want to live, but um, I'm going to die. So why not? Um, make the transition as good as you can, a so-called good death. It has been until now Montana law that if a physician helped a patient in dying, uh, that you simply can't do that because it simply has been against the law and is considered as homicide on the physician's part. The Baxter decision is enormous because it breaks all of that and it indicates that the courts believe that uh, upon a patient's request that a physician can by prescription administer drugs to a patient that the patient takes themselves and that a physician cannot be prosecuted that is not homicide and so a physician is free to assist the patient in dying should the patient request that. What I hear over and over again from patients is just don't let me die in pain, don't let me die out of control, don't let me lose my mind as I'm dying. Uh, and um, I think that with this, with, with, with this ruling now, uh, those, uh, those concerns that are expressed by patients are going to, I'm going to be able to with much greater confidence say that, that you will have control over your own passing, that it won't be in my control or the control of the state, that when you're ready, uh, you'll be able to go. I think it's very important for people to understand that, that this is not something that's going to uh, take place against someone's will, uh, that uh, it is only with uh, the, the informed consent of the individual, uh, and uh, that person uh, clearly uh, needs to demonstrate that it's not a, the result of depression, not the result of being pressured by anyone, uh, and, um, uh, and that they are completely uh, alert and, and in uh, of, of full possession of their mental faculties uh, at the time that they're going into this kind of a decision. My idea on the assistance to dying is that the individual has been given by God free will uh, to make up his or her own mind and that God does not create individuals to be stringed puppets, but rather to employ uh, compassion and love in their life. I think it's a very personal decision, and I think the government should stay out of it. 
uh, period. Uh, they have no room coming to my line saying how I am going to die. People will say that the, that the job of, of a physician is that of a healer. Uh, and I, I clearly agree with that. And my primary job is to try and heal disease. But when healing can no longer happen, then what is next? And what is next are one of two options. To let nature take its course in whatever horrible way nature decides to do. Or to take some control over that decision, over that natural process. And for me, uh, as a physician, uh, uh, pledge not to, not only to heal, but also to alleviate pain and suffering. Uh, giving patients the option of, of taking control over those final days, hours, uh, seems to me eminently humane. I keep hearing the term assisted suicide tossed around. That really bothers me because in no way is this suicide. It's aid in dying. You're terminal. You're going to die anyway. And to have the option to be able to do that on your own terms. If dad had had that option, he wouldn't have hoarded pain medication under his bed. He wouldn't have been thinking about going on the, out on the porch to freeze to death. He would have immediately contacted a doctor and we would have had a frank discussion about all of the options and how this was gonna go. I haven't talked to very many people who watched a painful passing of one of their loved ones that didn't agree with the fact that there should be something to help people in that situation. If we're going to die for sure, um, and most of, and we'll all die, some of us will know for sure the approximate time and will experience some of the symptoms, we ought to have another choice than and not knowing, I don't think that's the way to go. I think I should have something, if not a lot, to say about my ending. Dick was the love of my life. He died of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He faced his terminal illness, suffered from it, often felt like he was suffocating. He believed we adults have a responsibility to make our own decisions and he wanted to make decisions about his own death. He wanted to die with dignity in a way that would honor his life. He wanted the peace of mind and comfort of knowing that he had the choice to have a peaceful and dignified death. Dick didn't get that choice, but now we in Montana do have that choice. <laughs>